Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by active and passive immunity. You should then be able to describe how immunity can be either natural or artificial. Over the last few videos, we've been looking at how the immune system protects us from diseases, for example diseases caused by pathogens. We've seen that infection with a pathogen triggers B lymphocytes to produce antibodies, which specifically target antigens on the pathogen. B memory cells are also produced, which can protect us against later infection by the same pathogen. Infection by a pathogen also triggers T lymphocytes to become activated. Activated T helper cells produce cytokines called interleukins, which stimulate B lymphocytes. Whereas cytotoxic T cells directly kill cells which have become infected, for example by a virus. And just like with B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes also form memory cells, which can protect against later infection by the same pathogen. Now scientists refer to this type of immunity as active immunity. That's because B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes were activated, antibodies were produced, and memory cells were formed. In humans, active immunity can happen in two different ways. Firstly, as I've just described, we can be infected with a pathogen. Because pathogen infection is a naturally occurring process, scientists call this natural active immunity. Alternatively, humans can be vaccinated against a pathogen, and we're going to be looking at vaccination in a later video. Vaccines can contain dead or weakened pathogens, or antigens which are extracted from pathogens. Vaccines stimulate the immune system, activating B and T lymphocytes, triggering the production of antibodies and the formation of memory cells. So because of this, vaccination is an example of active immunity. However, because vaccination is a medical procedure rather than a natural process, scientists refer to vaccination as artificial active immunity. Okay, so as we've seen, active immunity involves the activation of B and T lymphocytes, the production of antibodies and the formation of memory cells. However, there is another kind of immunity which is called passive immunity. In passive immunity, the immune system is not activated. Now, there are two ways that passive immunity can take place. The first example is in babies. Newborn babies cannot make antibodies effectively as their immune system is not fully developed. However, as a developing fetus, the baby receives antibodies from the mother through the placenta. Also, in the first few days after a baby is born, the mother's breast milk is very rich in antibodies. This breast milk is called colostrum. The antibodies in colostrum pass from the baby's digestive system into the baby's bloodstream. So because the baby has received antibodies from its mother, the baby has some immunity to pathogens. However, because these antibodies were not made by the baby's own immune system, this immunity is passive immunity. Now this example of passive immunity is a naturally occurring process that takes place in all mammals, not just humans. So scientists call this natural passive immunity. Okay, I'm showing you here a patient with the disease tetanus. Tetanus is caused by infection with the bacterium Clostridium tetani, which is found in soil. This bacterium can pass into wounds in the skin. Once in the body, the bacteria produce a toxin which can cause muscles to undergo spasms, and these spasms can prevent the patient from breathing. Now, a tetanus infection can lead to death before your immune system can produce antibodies against the toxin. So, when a patient is suspected of having tetanus, doctors give the patient an injection of antibodies against the tetanus toxin. These antibodies are manufactured by injecting horses with inactivated tetanus toxin. The horses make antibodies to the tetanus toxin, and these antibodies are then extracted from the horse's blood. When these antibodies are injected into a patient with tetanus, the antibodies attach to the tetanus toxin and prevent it from harming the patient. Now because these antibodies were not produced by the patient's immune system, this is passive immunity. And because it's a medical procedure that would not take place naturally, this is referred to as artificial passive immunity. 
Now, a key idea you need to understand is that both types of passive immunity are only temporary. That's because the antibodies which have been given are gradually broken down. In the next video, we look at vaccination.